might make your head blow up. Hey yo, it's a talk show host, Kana Lassiter. Kana Lassiter. Join me for an episode of Relations, the most lit lit hour of adult conversation. Hold up, hold up. You know you can't forget about me. It's 51 Spades, Alpha Male G O D. One half of Relations. You wanna hear the truth? Can, can, can you can you can you handle the truth? Cause where's that baby? Cause where's that baby? What's good? Welcome to an all new episode of Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter. Say it with me now, Alpha Male G O D 51 Spade, aka the ninja you love to hate. I'm in the building. Oh, y'all know how we do this. Two exciting topics every single Friday night. Tonight we're going to start with the domino effect. Uh, and I'll explain, you know, what we're talking about when we get into the topic. And the second topic would be men who don't <laughs> date women with children and why. So let's start with the domino effect. It all came from a meme with two women and a young man. And it kind of showed the evolution of a woman's attitude about men. So the first woman in the picture is obviously an older woman. And she's saying, I don't need a man. And the second person in the picture is a young lady who appears to be the woman's daughter now saying, I don't want a man. And then the third picture is a, is a little boy. And he's saying now, I don't want to be a man. So the evolution of... I don't need a man. I don't want a man. And now I don't even want to be one. That is the domino effect. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to tackle this as gracefully as we can without being offensive. Do have a lot of friends in the LGBTQ community. And so the young man saying I don't want to be a man is kind of an ode to <clears throat> transgender. So we're going to tread lightly. We're going to start with you first, what I think. What hand over here for? I done told you about that. What? What do you mean tread lightly and then wave over my way? Because I want you to be sensitive. I don't have to be sensitive because that doesn't that has nothing to do with what's going on. Okay, so we're going to start with, first of all, the person at fault in the meme. Which would be the older woman who appears to be the <clears throat> mother saying, I don't need no man. We're going to talk about that because there's a thin line. I get where that idea comes from. And a lot of times we talk about the feminist movement here on the show. And I always have to say that there are some women who have been through some pretty tough things who came out on the other side. And to be able to remove the word need from your vocabulary when it comes to anyone else, whether it's a job or whether it's someone... Um, a friend, it's it's cool to be able to say, I don't need that type of help. I got it. So the statement, I don't need a man, was meant to be a powerful statement for women being independent. That I can appreciate. But it's a thin line because, first of all, if you have children in the home, you saying that you don't need a man could be detrimental because you're going to have your kids thinking that and it's not true your kids definitely need that that man influence so it's a thin line for me um but i am more on the side of let's watch how we're talking about men in front of our impressionable children when my mom and dad argued it bothered me to my core even before i was this smart that she was talking shit about my daddy no matter whether he was wrong or right, that's my daddy. Don't talk shit about my dad. And now that I'm old enough to understand that, I, I stand by that. I'm old enough now to understand even why she was mad at him and why she was talking shit about him. But to take me through those emotions and to give me trauma from her anger was wrong. And so that's why I stand on the side of being kind of dismayed with the older person in this scenario, teaching the younger people below her or showing the younger people below her that she does not need a man. Mm. I definitely have a problem with it. That's good. You're probably one of a billion 
or probably one of a million that actually even probably feel that way. It's probably a little bit more, but I doubt very seriously. Um, this is, whew, this topic is so, so broad and big and deep mm -hmm. that it's kind of, I mean, we could be on this, this, this topic for like four hours, but to kind of shorten it down, I'll I always start this way. When I looked at the, the meme and what you were saying about the meme, I it's glad I'm glad you broke it down as far as going the, the route of your parents, because I feel like a lot of things go in the start in the household. Mm -hmm. The men now, and especially I, I have to only speak from the black man. We are an endangered species that the women. Um, don't look at with respect. Um, and when you when I hear women, especially from the Generation X movement, it it's they've that domino effect that it's saying in that meme has definitely spent off some real bad things that actually affects um, not only their sons, their daughters, relationships. It's spun into a whole bunch of things that I think they don't even realize what happening. And it, and to me, it started like in the civil rights movement in the the, the 60s. Um, once women started getting, our women decided to go on their own crusade to fight the white woman's fight because they didn't have an issue with the men that they had. When you look at the Black Panther parties and things that we had going on, there was no separation between us. The black women decided to take on their white women's fight for issues that they had. And from that generation X saying that we don't need men and then preaching that to their daughters in the household and stuff like that. And now we have women now that they're often, place. They're often saying, well, they're often saying like, well, we can't find a man or we don't want a man. And they think their careers are enough. <clears throat> And like I said, we can dive a little bit deeper into that. But I would say that what did your mom say to you when you said, don't talk about my daddy that way? We'll tackle that first. Um, She would often say, I mean, she wouldn't really say anything. And I wouldn't, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I actually verbalized that to my mother. Oh, okay. I just. So why did you? I think she could tell I, I did what I could do as a child within my means. Oh, okay. When you're, I guess I when you're had little, you were. Yeah. yeah, when you're little, you don't you don't really verbalize it, but you show in your actions by going to your room and slamming your door or after she's done ranting, can I go to my daddy's house? Or I'm about to go call my daddy. You know, you will just say things like that. Oh yeah, go call him and tell him you about get them shoes you've been asking me for too. Let him pay for that. You know, just little stuff like that. Or if I if she was frustrated with him and I just happened to ask her, I had something coming up. Hey, you know, I need a new pair of shoes. Why don't you go ask your daddy? Maybe because I was a little bit overzealous about spending the weekend with him or looking forward to spending the weekend uh, with him. It just seemed to rub her the wrong way. But she could tell in the way I reacted to how, what she was saying that it did bother me. Mm -hmm. um, in my older years, I have verbalized to other people, not really to my mom, but to other people in those situations. You know, hey, it was traumatic for me to hear my mom say bad things about my dad. Now, that message I will spread to those who are having that direct problem, stepmother, stepfather, those type of issues with uh, having your dad, absentee father or dad outside the home. Whenever I hear those type of conversations, I tend to interject from the little girl standpoint. Mm -hmm. And from the little girl standpoint, things are going to be a little bit different. And I think that you get more empathy when you are hearing from a child standpoint because they're they're innocent. They don't have a dog in the fight, really. They're just telling you how it feels. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And then when you first started, you said that you looked at that meme and you said that you looked at the last person, which was the son, saying that I don't even want to be a man. I don't want to be a man. Anymore. And what did you get out of that? <sighs> and this is where I tread lightly because I mm -hmm. do have the belief that science goes wrong. I do have to believe that if a baby can be born with a sixth toe, 
then he certainly could be born the wrong sex. However, if you have an abusive father in the house that punches your mom every day, studies say in most cases, when you get your own house, your boyfriend gonna beat your ass every day too because that's the type of man that you're gonna pick. So if you have a household where there's women always saying, I don't need a man, I don't want a man, then in most cases, you have a little boy that hears that who is now saying, I don't want to be no man. If he's, if you got a son in the house with a whole bunch of women and all they doing is male bashing, niggas ain't shit, but hoes and tricks, niggas don't do nothing, play get, uh, play games and jack their dick all day, you have a little son sitting around with saying, well, damn, the people that I love and that take care of me hate men. So I don't want to be one. That could certainly happen. And that could be some of the results of the people we know now as transgender. Everybody wasn't molested when they were little. Everybody wasn't born wrong and didn't feel like a little girl. There's 10% of the transgender population. I don't know what the real statistic is, guys. I'm just saying a, a number in my head. But there's a percentage of transgender people who just grew up in a fucked up environment. And this is who they became because of it. That I do believe. That's kind of crazy <laughs> listening to you say that. Cause, and you got that from out of that meme. And, I mean, I guess that just shows, like, how differently people actually think. Um, actually looking at the meme, didn't even think about that. Didn't think about transgender. Didn't think about any of this stuff. It went as simple to me is when a little boy sees um, his dad, often he wants to be like his dad. He often look at his dad as a superman, a superhero, someone he wants to emulate, someone that he wants to be. Um, and when you have uh, women in the house saying that, what I saw from the meme is saying, basically he's just saying that, y'all talking so bad about a man, do I even really want to be, be a man, but not yeah. from the, the, not from the standpoint of being transgender or anything. Like I'm just saying, just being a man, having the man responsibilities, like men are talked to talked about being downed a, a lot of time in any conversation that most women have. The women, the, 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 the little boy that they're raising, they're raising the man, that they often talk about they hate. That's what's going on in that domino effect right there. Like, women often say that they, I'm good being single or I'm good being by myself. Where the men at? Men ain't shit, this, this, and that. And he starts to develop the idea that I can just not be shit. Y'all all saying men ain't shit. So I'm not saying what I'm seeing from it is saying I don't need the responsibilities of a man or things that come with being a man. Because I'm watching two women talk bad about men. So why in the fuck would I want to be that? Not saying I want to change my sex or anything like that. Just saying, y'all talking about men like they ain't shit. And probably if, if and why do I have to amount to anything if you already saying ain't shit? Which means that if you saying, oh, your daddy ain't shit. He ain't got no job. All he does is is, is cheat. Um, all the... Those things you are emulating, saying that he's saying, he thinks those are men character characteristics, and so he becomes that. So he or be, tries not to. So yeah. So he, he. So his standards are not high. Right. Versus if a dad was in the house, and he actually like I saw my dad actually confront other men, and said to myself, "Damn, that's how you confront a man." You know, like when he had a problem with him. You know, but without seeing that. Just hear if, if I would have heard my mom say, well, he ain't shit and he ain't this and he ain't that, then I just would have thought he was just a sorry motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But seeing those little things, my dad used to make me also, like, help me speak. Like, he took me one time to a McDonald's and was like, order your food. And I looked at him and he was like, order your food. <laughs> he was making me a man, mm -hmm. showing me how to speak up for myself. Right. You know? Those are things that men don't get credit for yeah. a lot of times since we ain't shit and all we do is cheat and all we do is lie and all we do. The missing element a lot of times in the household of that man is that. So instead of the grandma and the mama teaching them how to be a man, they talking down upon a man. 
how in the fuck is that trying to make him want to be a man? Right. So that's what I got out of that domino effect of him saying, I don't even want to be a man. I don't look at villains from on, on uh, a Marvel picture or something and be like, well, I want to be the villain. They typically want to be the hero. The hero. You right. see what I'm saying? Now, there's some that might want to be a villain, but I'm just saying typically that's how it go because you looking at a superhero and saying, damn, I wish I had that power. Damn, I wish I had that charisma. Damn, I wish I talked like that. Damn, I wish I was that strong. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But just imagine if they was talking about the hero, like in Hancock is a good example of that. When they, he, and the guy was saying... You need to humble yourself. Make people want you. Make people like you. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But all the bad ne- negative energy made him be like, well, I got these superpowers. What the fuck I want to help y'all for? Like, y'all y'all do is talk shit about me and say I fuck up shit and do shit wrong. So that's how he operated. He yeah. operated like a fuck up. Yeah. Until someone came along and said, no, you don't have to be a fuck up. You have these powers and you can be liked. You can be a man. You can be a hero that people like. So when I look at that, I don't think that women understand the detriment that they're doing by saying, well, I'm good being single. I don't need a man for shit. That's Mm -hmm. incorrect. It isn't, but I think in order to have an intelligent conversation, you have to understand and be at peace with where that comes from. You just have to. You can't go in and attack independent women Mm. and say that's fucked up y'all bitches know y'all need a man y'all got that shit twisted y'all joined the wrong movement the delivery has to be different and the reason why the delivery has to be different is because we ended up going into being independent because we were damaged whether the white man infiltrated and bought all the dope I know the backstory. I know it's not the black man's fault but it is what it is And we ended up in the projects, poor, abused, got drug addicted husbands. We did not have a choice. Yes, we joined another crusade. I get all of that. But the fact remains that without the teaching of, hey, you can go out and make the paycheck. Hey, you can do this on your own. Those those. Yes, there were some conversations that were designed to divide. I get that, too. But not all of them. Some of those conversations were to encourage because he's on crack and girl, you got three kids. What the fuck you going to do? And she had to go out there and get it. And she needed that push and she needed that pep talk. And that somehow translated into I can do it and I don't need a, a man. I don't need him. I can do this on my own instead of saying When he was down, I went and got it. So I know I can do it, but I'm about to help him get back on his feet. And I've done it. Now I can put him in a position to get back to where we need to be. That's what went wrong. I don't think elevating the woman and showing her that she could do it on her own was wrong. I think that we showing her that she could do it on her own and keeping her doing it on her own was wrong. Keeping her in that frame of mind instead of keeping her in the frame of mind as he can't do it. He's down. Crack. He's got a crack habit. He's on unemployment. Whatever it is, it means that he's down. At the point that your king is down, yeah, you get up and you collect the check. Do what you need to do. However, you're not supposed to abandon the man. You're supposed to collect that check and now help him up. So I think we just got the signals crossed somewhere In the dialect, in the communication, it was never communicated that the motive was to go out there on your own just to show you that you could and that you're supposed to come back and assist, not haul ass. And we we abandoned shit. We we definitely jumped shit, for sure. I just don't think that that was everybody's motive. I mean, whether it's your motive or not, you know, you have to deal with the main thing, which is conversation. But I will tell you, what goes on that's real crazy is like double standards. I often hear women say things about double standards, Mm -hmm. but they always apply those double standards to themselves. Mm -hmm. They never apply the double standards to men. And men get a lot of the double standard bullshit that go on in this world. And I appreciate you saying that, you know, we abandoned or we, we jumped shipped. And in theory, 
it would have been that, you know, I can hold my man down, down. Right. You know, and then uplift him. But the problem is this. Ranking systems, where people live, where people view themselves, a lot of times get in the way of people's ego. How women are, I'll say like, I could say to you, hey, look at this bitch right here. Hey, look at this hoe right here. You know, and look at this woman right here. I just showed you different crops of how it could go down. And even for me, listening to rap growing up, bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks, too short, bitch, all kind of shit like that, never as implied is a woman. Men, when men ain't shit, we all one group. That's how women see it. And it's that's a double standard. Because there is no, even though you're saying they, there's, there's, they, there was fathers that was cracking, every father wasn't a crackhead. They were working. They were. Okay, work, they I'm... were. They were working men out here. But the problem is this: when someone starts making, like what I was just saying about when they have governmental assistance, like you're saying, like that push that you need to help. That push also is there to create divide. Certain women won't come back and help or try to uplift their counterpart. Because they're making more money than their counterpart. Because they are giving actually jobs, not careers, nursing fields, etc., etc. So when they get at a certain spot, it's like, well, I can just do this. I can just do that. And then the men, that's an average man that they probably should be with. They look at them like they ain't shit. Mm. I saw this meme not too long ago where it showed a woman on one side. And a man on the other side. And they both had jobs at McDonald's. The guy side was, look at this broke ass nigga. And the other side was, look at this independent woman. Mm. (laughs) Now, that's typically how it goes. Mm. She's supposed to be independent at McDonald's. But if a man at McDonald's... He broke. He, 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 you know, he broke. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's some of the double standards of what I'm talking about. Like, to, to... Money sometimes separate a bunch of people, too. And I feel like, you know, the government also also knows that, too, as well. And that created some divide, too. You know, those conversations weren't being held. Mm. I don't really feel like women had a bunch of problems with men, you know, or I call like the color purple effect where they like saying, well, men were just beating them and doing all this type of shit and abusing them. And shit. I feel like those are storylines that were devised also. To say that this was happening. I can't say for myself. I saw that type of shit. I ain't saying it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But black men weren't in power positions like that to keep women down. Mm-hmm. Well, I will tell you how they kept them down. They kept them down by blackening their eyes. That's, they kept them that's down. That's color purple. I, you know what? Listen, I I ain't silly. That's right. I lived on a very, I lived on a military base and I still saw abuse. I still saw drug use. It would hold a, holding a woman back is in more ways than you sucking on a on, on a pipe. You could be out fucking tons of women while your wife is home pregnant. You know, you keeping your wife pregnant while you out running the streets. So there's ways to mentally abuse and hold back that woman. Now I want you to take that woman, for instance, on a military base. You the bee's knees in the Marines. I'm home pregnant with my second child. You're never home. I don't work. So I'm now, you you are my only source of companionship, my only source of, of income. You're my bread and butter and you're my shelter. And I can't even trust where your dick been. You know, so that leaves her. What do I do? Okay, so you get on the bus. You take your kids all the way back from where you're originally from and you get it by yourself. This is a person who we the the world is showing that he fucked up. Now he wasn't on drugs. He wasn't beating you up every day, but he left you alone in a state where you don't know nobody, where you don't have anything to call your own and he's just telling you, "Hey, basically he put you in your own personal luxurious prison 
Because that's what it is. I don't have love. I don't have companionship. I don't have friendship. I'm just pregnant and my husband is running the streets. So that woman also, who has been done wrong, is now out here building her life, paying her bills and raising her kids by herself. How is she supposed to keep a positive frame of mind? She wasn't getting beat up. That ain't the color purple. That's just someone blatantly keeping her unhappy by his actions. How do you encourage that person to go back? She doesn't want to. And the reason why I want to say something else, you made a point. Oh, it's easy to point out those are hoes. Those are, I don't know, they almost there. They in between. So you use another word for them. And then those are women over there, clearly. Like we go through stages. Men, whether they're 18 or 65, Mm -hmm. will cheat. Okay? I think just the... I just think the idea that we group men in as all cheaters and all liars is just an ode to what y'all been saying this whole time. Well, damn, that's a a man's nature. This is what a man does. Y'all have also confirmed what we've been bitching about by that new wave shit. Well, just let me be me. I'm a lion. Do mammals uh, practice monogamy? These are the type of things, these are the answers to y'all all cheaters and liars. Your answers are, oh, we're just being us. So don't get mad when women group y'all in all as cheaters and liars because you've all confirmed that by just saying, well, that's our nature. We're going to want more than one person. So it's not like you're counteracting that with a good, empathetic explanation as to who and what you are. It doesn't make any sense. Now, Does it make sense to me? Yeah, but I'm deeper into the conversation. I'm not someone that just caught her man cheating on her. You know, so this is more emotionally filled than it is intelligently filled. And you guys don't know how to respond when your dick was caught in the peanut butter jar. Y'all don't know how to have a conversation, uh, uh, an intelligent conversation. And she probably doesn't know how to listen intelligently because you're doing something that's considered to be negative. So how is somebody supposed to walk away from that in a positive direction, become an independent woman and you know what, and say, you know what, I'm going to take this back home to my cheating husband. That's not going to happen. They're going to develop a thick skin. And yes, they're going to say men are this way. It can't be that you cannot place it all on the woman and just say, oh, she's just out there making bad decisions. I think I would like to see more men take responsibility for the fact that women want to be independent Take more responsibility for the fact that she don't want a man. She don't want a man because he keep beating her up. And he keep giving her STDs. And the little girl that see her mama go through that, she's saying right now she don't even want a man. Fuck me the man. I just don't want to go through my mama, what my mama went through. And then her brother is looking at her, look at her mom saying, mom's stupid for going for that shit. And now he like, uh-uh, girl, like I'm going to the mall with y'all. These niggas is too much. That's what happened. That is the, the, uh, Whatever we call the the effect, the 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 domino effect. That's what's happening. Is that we're just seeing more men not be empathetic or sorry or intelligent about their mistake. They're more boastful about their mistake because now they have something intelligent to blame it on instead of being empathetic. Sounds good. Alice Walker, who actually wrote, did he just uh, say uh, it sounds good? Yeah, it sounds good. Alice Walker, who actually wrote The Color Purple, has actually went on the record as saying that the things that she wrote about The Color Purple is that were for entertainment purposes. And this is one of the things that I was actually talking about is like when women start saying stuff like, you know, we was out here getting our eyes blackened and stuff. They act like, you know, I'm going to just say for me, I didn't see it. There's a lot of I know a lot of peers that say they didn't see it. Men were men and women were actually getting married at a higher rate back then than they actually. But why are do you that. think that is? If you let me talk, I let you long win for about fifteen minutes with no interruption. But this is, but minutes. but this is the oh yeah, I, we could play this back. It was not fifteen minutes. <laughs> well, I, you it was longer than you gave me a chance, and this is the problem right here. What you're doing right now. See, women have one-way conversations, and they are incapable a lot of times of having intelligent conversations because when they, when they, see what I'm saying? Anytime, anytime a man starts speaking, it's like, 
earwax start developing in the woman's ear. Like they only want to have one way conversation about victims that they are. That's cool if you want to play victim. You can paint whatever narrative that's in your head that you want to paint. But the idea to sit there and say that, well, this is going on because you are cheaters and liars. And first of all, if uh, every man that cheats don't have to be a liar, that's first of all. And there's plenty of marriages that have worked with men actually cheating. There are women who actually turn a blind eye to those things or do not snoop or do not go past any realm. Know why? Because this man that's more than likely is a high value man provides a, a lifestyle for this person. So he's not shit. He's taking care of the person and she's not getting beat, getting a black eye, all these stories that come out of women's mouths. That's like, Oh, well this is going on. And this. The, it, the other issue is when women choose for whatever reason, because of upbringing, household issues, or just not doing their due diligence about men, they choose one bad man or two bad men, or they just make mistakes. They do not know how to choose men. Not saying throughout their own fault or anything like that. Just saying that in that household, a lot of times I've asked women a lot of times, like you chose this man. What did you, what did your dad think about this man? Oh, well, I didn't bring him around my parents' house or I didn't bring him to my dad. I didn't do a lot of these things. Women a lot of times get involved with bad men, then separate themselves from their family members, friends, stuff like this, and say, all men now are just one way. The men that they can choose that will treat them the, the proper way to be respected and how they really want to be, they don't want those men. They often want the bad man. They often want the man with money. They often want the man that can't do really shit for them or put them in this bottle to keep them down and then say, well, all men are the same. And that's not true. That is the narrative that's always painted. That is the narrative that they do for stories, uh, TV shows, movies and shit like that. But when men, when men are confronted with women that saying stuff like that, I don't want a man. They don't want that man because they'll be like, or well, this man ain't edgy enough. Or this man is not really what I'm looking for. Or this man ain't fucking me the way that I really want to be fucked. It's about sex for y'all and how much dick can he give. All the wrong reasons that women are choosing these men and then trying to crop them all together and say, well, men just cheat and men just lie instead of choosing the correct man okay, or mate. I or disagree. I disagree. Because the you can choose the correct mate and he can still fall in somebody else's pussy two Tuesdays from Easter. So it doesn't matter. Picking right doesn't always work. You could pick fucking... You don't know that. I don't know. You could pick... Uh, what's his name? Um, Urkel. And Urkel <clears throat> could fucking find his way in some pussy if he needed to. You hear that word you keep saying? Could. You don't know that. See the I don't know that, but you don't know that either by saying, okay, you're picking the wrong... If you're picking a guy that cheat on you, then you're just picking the wrong kind of guy. How can you say that? Who is a guy that isn't cheating? That's not a, Pick that is, that is not, to one. That is not what I said either. I said when women choose the wrong guy, they crop all the guys together. I didn't say anything about them constantly picking one bad guy or bad guy after another. I said that any household, if you're not taught properly how to choose a man and then you choose one then you step away from your family, you don't even have your family members helping you to say, hey, this is the right guy or this is the wrong guy. But I don't uh, even think that's relevant because, listen. Everybody thinks that is Yeah, not, I don't think that's relevant because my guy, I haven't paraded around to every family member and he ain't even fucking friendly. So uh, if it's up to them, I think he's great and they think he's a fucking jerk. That's cool. But the question would be, is your guy beating your ass? Is your guy abusing you? But you is know your, what? I'm glad. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, time out. Hurry up. Is you, don't tell me to hurry up. Come on. If, if you listening, just listen. We're not. If we're gonna have an intelligent debate. Let's have one. Okay. But you can't say. Are you gonna make me just, forget my point in a minute? Because well, I was making one and you interrupted me. So is make, it your turn to talk or my turn to talk? Because I well, was talking. And well, it was. A, where, it's a debate interceded. show. It's, it's a debate show. I was well, answering come your on, question. Make your points before I forget mine. Because I don't oh. want to forget it. Well, I've, go ahead. Since you forgetful. This is my thing. I am kind of perturbed that. You are grouping in him, a person being unfaithful with not being hurtful. 
talking about? You just said, oh, do you have any? He's maybe cheating, but do you have any black eyes? This ain't the color That's purple time. What <laughs> but what? But you're still you're you're still saying we don't live in Alice Walker times. She wrote something from this time. Women ain't walking around like that. You, women might not be walking around with two black eyes, but a man cheating on her twice might be doing the same damage or worse. You just don't see it. A man that goes home and is exposed for doing something malicious, something hurtful, just because the woman does not have a black eye or a bruised lip does not mean she is not physically hurt and hurt badly. It's just that uh, it's a bruise on the inside. That none of us can see. You don't know the damage that she's done to her kidneys because her sugar has raised. When you stress a diabetic out, the sugar goes up. And when the sugar goes up, it fucks with the kidneys and the liver. So what damage have you done and for how long? Have you, meaning what type of damage have you done and how lasting is it on her organs? Is this damage that you've done? That she cried for 24 hours? Is that now taking five years off her life? We don't know because those studies are still happening on what your emotional health does to your organs. I am will be so glad when we know that the equivalent of calling a, a, a woman a bitch is the equivalent of choking her for five minutes and she can't breathe. It does the same type of damage. I'll be glad when we know that shit so y'all start stop brushing lies and cheating under the rug if you're hurting someone you're hurting someone you just hurt them emotionally it's the same as giving them a motherfucking black eye it just doesn't it just don't look bad because you can't see it and i get tired of that oh a man gonna be a man at least the bills paid let him cheat but it hurts i don't give a fuck if the rent paid if my heart is broken yeah i got somewhere to stay and i don't have to work but it doesn't change the damage that's been going on inside of my body so stop using that so fuck that high value man that pay all the bills if i can't live to enjoy it because my heart is broken then what good is that therapy is something that a lot of women need that sounds good and, and dandy and what you're saying i feel sorry for you makes me want to shed a tear um this is the real world that we live in that those things that you're talking about Human beings go through that every single day. And that's day. why our life is... Am I talking now or not? I let you talk, so zip it. Here's the deal. That what you're talking about, human beings go through that every day. Black man is the most endangered species that, 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 that there is. So, we, if you want to talk about that, then we have to talk about racism. We have to talk about colorism. We have to talk about everything that actually goes on in this world. Those things right there, that's good. Sorry that they happened to you. But I asked you a question that was not answered. You just rambled on for about another 15 minutes again. I asked you, had you been with an abusive man yes. in your life? And did your family know? No. Why not? Because I was too embarrassed to say. Exactly. And this is the thing is what I'm talking about. If family members were involved in some of your discretions that you did the trauma that has impacted you would probably not be there everybody experiences drama trauma i i i experienced i grew up in louisiana i experienced the most trauma that there is which is dealing with racism so everybody deals with trauma whether it's crying hurting whatever the case may be everybody deals everybody deals with something in life okay now learning how to deal with your trauma that that you're receiving, I would say to you, if this person was abusive to you, what did you do after the abusive relationship? Did you get back out here on the market? Did you start dating again? Did you go see therapy? See, this is the thing that I get tired of hearing from women. They're sitting there and saying, I was heartbroken, this and that. But jump out of relationship to relationship. And then when we're talking about cheating, it's always about a man cheating, a man cheating, a man cheating. Men cheat at 28%. Women cheat at 24%. That is not a big goddamn difference. Women out here cheating just as much as fucking men cheating. Who walks away from relationships? Women walk away from relationships. It's not men leaving the relationships. Who is complaining the most about relationships? Well, obviously from the meme that we're showing, women are complaining about relationships. 
And to sit there and say, well, my heart is broken and I'm crying and I'm not getting and then jump out of one relationship right into another without fixing itself. Something is mentally wrong with the woman. Get yourself fixed. Just because you want something in this world does not mean that you have to have it. You won't want a man. Cool. You don't have to have a man. You don't want to deal with the you want to sleep peaceful at night. You want something to calm your soul. You want to listen to oceans and rivers and play those little things at night to have a calm, peaceful. Then don't have a man. I get tired of women sitting there saying like, well, I don't want to cheat man and I don't have to accept this shit and I don't have to. You don't have to put up with nothing. You can just be if you're black, stay black and die. You don't have to put up with any of these things. And I'm not asking a woman, man or any of the sort to put up with those type of things. You won't want to do it. Don't be on the market. But you can't change what's going on in the world. I think it's very interesting that a man would use the default of the condition of the world to excuse his bad behavior. Because you can't control. We can't control how racism started. How the hell am I going to compare the way my man is behaving to the unfairness of the world? You know what? Yeah, I get cheated on. But you know what? The black man, he and he works, walks around in danger all the time. So I guess I just got to deal with unfair because he does. That's not that wasn't that wasn't something that we created. Your behavior is your fault. I, the slavery is not our fault. Yes, it happened to us. And yes, it's, un, it's unfair. But we are not out there making it happen. When you lie to your spouse, you making it happen. When you cheat, you're making it happen. You are responsible for what you put out. Period. So t to me, yeah, great point. That shit ain't fair. But the way you treat your spouse is is in within your control. Slavery was not within our control. Uh, affirmative action is not with our in our control. How you're treated when you leave the house unfairly as a black man is not within our control. How we treat each other is within our control. Okay. And I really think but it's very interesting is to me. Cheating wrong. I, so who says it's wrong? Who has said it's cheating is wrong? Well, first of all, using the word cheat. Is wrong because it all you don't even have to use that word. A man having multiple, having it, having a man it. having options and and being his nature isn't wrong. But if you have to use the word cheating, if you have to technically say, if okay, cheat, wrong choice, then you're wrong. Okay, wrong choice of words. But who said having old, multiple women or I other options did. is wrong? I never did. Then there you go. That's that's the, that's the, that's the, the, that's that's the, that's the teaching, end, and that still that's has the, nothing to that's do that's the end of the with story. what I'm talking then about. Then that's the end of the story. And then I want to finish what I was saying. I think it's very interesting that even if a man in this room, was I wasn't done. That. I wasn't done I, what I was talking about. Okay, but I didn't finish me. my point. That, my point is this. I think cool. it's interesting that I, I any man in this room. You, I already heard what I you wasn't. Said. You didn't hear me because I didn't say it yet. I said it's interesting that any man in this room, if he hit his girlfriend right now, he will find his way to her to say, I'm sorry. And he will not try to justify why he gave her that black eye. That's not true. Just let me finish. He will find a way to have an intelligent conversation with her. And at the end of that conversation, I'm sure he's going to say that sh I should have put my hands on you because it doesn't matter whether you are Ike Turner or you are Poindexter. You know that putting your hands on a woman is wrong. And even though you can justify and have a good reason for it, you're going to say, I still shouldn't have put my hands on you. I should have left. I never saw but that. But you will not look at cheating in the same way you will not look at lying at the same way you know what babe i should have made a, a better decision i just shouldn't have lied i just shouldn't have cheated. that's not the conversation but you know immediately when you punch a bitch in the mouth you wrong but the cheating part you're you you're gonna try to if, if she and if she don't find out it's cool you know what i'm saying you're gonna you're only gonna deal with it as it comes but you know once you put your hands on her the wheels start turning on how to make this better it only starts turning how to make this better when you're cheating and lying is when you get exposed. That 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 punch though, you know you dead ass wrong. And you know you gotta fix it. You can't gloss over that. But the cheating and the lying, you will try. Over and over again, she sticks on one subject. And I've said over and over again, I have to rewind it. I guess it's just too much in the earwax of 
if you want to say <laughs> if that's the issue that you have, like I said, just step out of the relationship and just don't have one. No one has, not me, I don't think anybody on the audience is going to say, oh, yeah, cheating is just what it is or we're going for that. I never said that. I was asking questions about a man that was abusive to you and why you wasn't speaking to your family members about it to help you heal some of the trauma and uh, mistakes, unintelligent um, choosing that you were having going on. Whether this person's cheated or evil or bad or whatever it is, it's not like it still doesn't change the fact that women go in and out of relationships without getting the help that they need and also want to scream trauma, abuse and everything else and don't get themselves fixed. Doesn't really matter to me whether it's a, a cheating situation, a lying situation, the person that they choose like bad is bad and whatever is not good for you. Hey, that's cool for you. You don't want to be in a relationship. You don't have to be in one. That is the thing. Like sitting there saying what's wrong in a punch and this is what makes people this and that. Okay, so what? Like everyone know what bad actions are. But at the end of the day, that doesn't make you more intelligent because you came constantly making some of the wrong, stupid decisions that you doing instead of getting yourself fixed. If someone put their fucking hand on a stove and it's hot and burn theyself, then go back again and burn themselves again. But hey, that stove shouldn't be on. If they don't know how to cut the stove off, then guess what? Those things are still going to continue to happen. Every man does not cheat. Every man does not lie. That's just the reality of it. Mm -hmm. If you happen to choose one that does that, you're bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be his bad, but you also have to look at your decisions that you make in life. There are not, there are not every man in the fucking world fucking cheats. No one's going to prove that to me. No one's going to sit there and say that that is this. But what I can say is that oftentimes People don't do, you ask a woman, get a job, they'll get a job. They can do that from pillar to post, study, cram for it the whole nine. Ask them about their man. They don't know names, family members, uh, what kind of background he came from. It's excessive shit. All right, time for the second topic of the night. Why men with no children prefer women with no children? Why? And why do women get so offended about it? You know, this topic was unlike any of the other topics. This topic, I felt like I'm feeling lately when we talk about women with kids that I have to tread lightly. Okay? Because I'm a woman without them. And then, lo and behold, I watch a lot of other podcasts. And there's a guy that's clearly saying... That, hey, I don't have kids. So why would I bag a chick with kids? I would prefer to date children without. And a whole bunch of uh, date women without. There were a whole bunch of women who were like, that's wrong. You could be missing out on the love of your life. I'm sorry to getting judged because I got kids. Why does this devalue me? So I actually wanted to share him saying why. Instead of me sitting here saying why. But I couldn't do that. So now fast forward to us having the conversation on the show. And me using the guy as kind of a shield for me. Because I don't want to get beat up. For one, mostly all my very close friends. Or people I consider close friends. Have kids. And they have a lot of them. Like three of my girlfriends have four children. Three of them. They have four freaking kids. Um, two out of the four are two out of the three are single. And so when they themselves talk about finding mates, because I'm a transparent person, the first thing I want to say to them is, girl, be careful. You know, you got four kids. Um, girl, you, you know, and there's a lot of reasons why I'm saying be careful. Uh, one 
There's a lot of child molesters out there who actually prey on women with kids. That's number one. Number two, make sure you're picking carefully because why would this guy choose you in your situation? And I'm not trying to be funny, but you got a bad kid. Then you got two other ones who aren't anywhere near being out away from the home. What can you offer? I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm again, I'm treading lightly because there's a woman looking at this saying, so what are you saying? I shouldn't be looking for love and affection. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you have to be a lot more selective because you got a lot more to protect. That's number one. And number two, you need to be a lot more selective because your situation ain't as comfortable as the woman without kids. So if a man has options, you're on the top of the list to get cut if he can't watch the game because your kid crying. You going to get cut because your man trying to get undressed. He got his dick hanging out and your child walking through the front door of your room because you don't have boundaries in place. So what I'm saying is your environment isn't even conducive to the type of man you're looking for. Most of my girlfriends want a man like I got. An alpha male, high value, look good, the whole nine. Well, that guy wants a peace of mind. That guy don't want to hear all that shit you got going on in your house. That guy don't want to get get keep putting off because you don't have a babysitter. That guy don't want to hear you cry about how bad your kid is and his grades are bringing in. So what I'm saying is you have to be more selective because you probably need to pick someone else who's going through the same shit that you're going through. You need to pick the guy that got as many kids as you do. You need to pick the guy who has a situation like yours in order for you to have the best chances to make that relationship work. That's what I'm saying. You can't go find the guy who's the star of a rap group. He don't want you. You can't go find the guy who's single and living his life to the fullest and traveling the world. Not because you're not worthy, but because you're not in a situation to make his life any better. So he's used to traveling every month. You can't do that. You got kids you can't leave behind. So what he's supposed to now change his whole lifestyle because he chose a woman with children. How worth it is that to him? I wish more women thought like that instead of looking at it as that's offensive. I'm a good person. I got a good heart. I was married and had these kids. My life isn't over yet. It's not. It is not over. But you're also asking someone to give up their life to come join yours. At what benefit and at what sacrifice? Why don't you answer that since you're the man? At what benefit and what sacrifice would you put yourself in that type of situation? Every man is different. Um, people are entitled to do what they want. Um, if someone feels like their lifestyle is conducive to it, that's fine. I'll get on topic as far as saying that tackling the idea that a man says, I have no kids, so I don't want to date any women who don't have kids, that's his prerogative. Women do all kind of bullshit and say what kind of shit that they don't want and don't want to put up with. Mm -hmm. So a man has every right to say, I don't have kids and I don't date women with, with kids. kids. All the the explanations and everything of what could go wrong, those are maybes. You know, no one knows for sure. But I would always stand behind anybody that makes their own point on what they want in life. And he don't have to choose it. Just like what I was saying for the last segment. You don't have to choose what you don't want to be part of. You don't mm -hmm. want to get cheated on. And don't choose it. It's called smart decision making. He's making a smart decision for himself. himself. So if he chooses not to do that, you know, that's his prerogative. I really wouldn't give a fuck with if any woman with kids was getting offended. It, mm -hmm. The only reason they're offended is because they have kids. If they didn't have kids, it wouldn't ruffle their it, it, it wouldn't ruffle their feathers and they wouldn't give a fuck. I always find often that when it deals with something that certain people are argumentative about is merely because it deals with their ass, you know what I'm saying? Or they feel a little uncomfortable in the situation and feels like it's being poked at them. But if this guy is saying, I don't got no kids, that's the key word. I don't got no kids. So I don't want a woman with kids. And it could be a reason he don't have kids. My cousin doesn't have kids. He doesn't want kids. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he cannot date a woman with kids, but mm -hmm. he chooses his way to whether he want to operate forward or behind. 
Now, when you look at a, a little bit deeper to, let's just say, people who get offended, that's when some of those things could possibly come up that Miss Lassiter was bringing up is that it might not be a comfortable environment for them. Um, a lot of times men get the shaft in a lot of those type of scenarios. Um, I'm not the biological father. So how far would you let a man that you date go as far as discipline? A lot of women that quote unquote go so long without having a man, let their house be in on a ruck. And, 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 and you can throw a bomb in the motherfucker or they'll let their kid throw a bomb in there. Hey, keep it dirty. Dirty dishes, the whole nine. And they won't let their kids clean it up, make their kids clean it up. But then the minute a man with authority comes in and it's not they dad, you're going to have a, a sticky situation going on as far as the woman going to think that she's stuck in a, a, a real hard spot between her kids in the person she quote unquote are in a relationship, love or whatever the case may be. But what would you do when your kids is like, well, I don't like him. I don't like his rules. I don't like how he talked to you. I don't like how he does this. And then your significant other is your kid is disrespectful, um, curses at you. And you want a me to be idle while he curse you out. Those are some of the things that come along sometimes with children. <clears throat> yeah. So I can certainly see, with those things, why a man would put himself in a position to say, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit more selective. I think I'm going to date women without children. Let me play devil's advocate and say how that might sound to a woman with children who consider herself, herself high value. The women that I spoke of, three friends that I have that have four children, I would consider these women high value women. Meaning they make money. They look pretty decent. None of them are ugly. Um, they have their shit together. Intelligent. On paper, the only thing is, damn, she got these kids. So when I'm hearing a guy say, I don't date women with kids. And I'm playing devil's advocate, putting myself in one of these positions as a woman with kids. I'm saying to myself, wow. You know, I'm I'm the bee's knees. I'm that shit. And that's because also you're blinded by love. You can't nobody really tell you something about your kids. Those are my babies. So hearing that may be hard, but I'll tell you the real issue. The real issue is how it sounds morally. Most people default to what's right and wrong. And it's bullshit because this world isn't really built on what's right and wrong. People don't conquer countries over right. They conquer them by being wrong. So we can't always use that. But I think a lot of these women are saying to themselves, hey, I had a good heart and that ain't right. I'm a good person. And just because I have kids, that should not ex exclude me from the waiting line. That's like a bouncer standing at the club door and he's saying, okay, you come in, you come in, you come in. Um, Yeah, you don't look good. Now, if you say I'm not old enough to get in the club and I don't have enough money to get in, those are two reasons I can't argue with. But if you're telling me that what I have on isn't good enough for your establishment, that would hit me personal. It would hurt my feelings and I would be able to walk away saying that just wasn't right. And I think that is the default phrase for these things. It's just not right. It's not right morally. It's not right because it feels wrong. And I think it's that's unintelligent. I get it. It's our default. And most people shut up after you say something like that. Well, damn, that wasn't the right thing to do. Damn, it wasn't the right thing to do. She came to the club with her friends and they sent her ass home. That's fucked up. That's going to be the comment. And it's human. So... We can't go around preaching that that's not right, but that state of mind is going to get you fucked up because it's you have to think more intelligently. I think you have to think of dating just like buying a car. You have to think of dating as business. You have to think of dating as why would this person want to date me? And sometimes it's OK to write down the pros and the cons. And if your con list doesn't have 
that I have four kids on it, then you are wronging yourself. And I, but I get why a mother wouldn't want to put that on her con list because a mother who loves her children isn't going to put her children under the word con. She's going to put her kids who she loves and that she's proud of under the word pro. Do you understand? And so because of that, and then how do you tell a person not to do that? That's why it's a, it's a, it's a conundrum for me. It's a thin line for me because I would not say to one of my friends, girl, you know, when you do your pro and con list about yourself, you got to put your kids on the con side. Even though I want to say that, even though I think it would help her think intelligently, I think we might end up in an argument. I think she would be able to say, well, damn, Kayla, that ain't right. My kids ain't no motherfucking con. My kids are motherfucking pro. And what am I going to say? Man, you got, if they listening to you, I wouldn't even listen to you. They're like, you're not in the same boat as them. That's true. I don't so, have any kids. So that's one so coming why from I me, be taking advice from you. Because you're not in the same boat. And often women do those type of things, take advice from someone that's not in their boat. So it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Like I said, it's it's situational. People can choose whatever they they want to feel or um, you know, uh I guess levitate themselves. Cause I don't know nobody that's gonna when first of all, I don't even know no women that will make a pro and con list. I know a few. And and if they do they pro and con list is definitely incorrect. <laughs> um, every woman that's gonna do some shit is gonna say they is gonna say like what you just said, some bullshit about like their high value. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be high value if they have kids because their value has already started Decrease. to already decrease. <laughs> so that's just within 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 itself. Now, am I telling you, hey, I got kids, so. I, it, it, it just, I'm not good for the market. No, I'm not saying that. You're good for someone on the market. It just depends on where, the hell, where the hell you fishing at. You know what I'm saying? Walmart, Publix, um, Manatee, wherever. It doesn't even, it doesn't even really matter. Um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter from this standpoint of what we're talking about, what the woman even think. It's coming from the standpoint of what the man thinks. Mm -hmm. So to me, they're all irrelevant anyway. They sit there and say, well, I'm a high value woman. You got more miles on your pussy than you used to. You, if you had, you, you pushed out kids, you've given somebody else the wound. You already devalued yourself to that man. Anyway, you should be happy that he's even accepting you anyway. Um, the other part of that is when it's not, uh, that's not biologically his. So what is he really getting out of the deal? And then women going to start in with that bullshit like they always do. Well, I'm smart and I'm funny and I make money and this and that. Most men don't care about none of that shit. Um, you know, whether you make money or this and that. If you make money, the person that you get is going to more than likely be someone who uses you anyway. So you're going to end up on the list of someone who is going to be crying and talking about somebody abused them, took advantage of them or whatever the case may be. Um, if you have a baby daddy involved in their active the man with the man is getting out of that shit. Uh, in some cases, I just told you earlier that women cheat at the at the high rate almost as a man. So now he has to worry about that. And if the baby daddy and you get into it, <laughs> men go violently. So, I mean, I don't see me injuring your baby daddy or putting him in the dirt and we still carry on after that because I'm quite sure the kid won't like me after that. So, there's a lot of things with that where I can see why any man would say that, yeah, I don't really want to go that route. I just prefer someone with no kids. Yeah. it's. I think the point here is how the women are actually hearing it and how to be able to take something like that constructively. And I also think if there are women out there who are dating, I think this is the way of you beginning to start thinking a little bit more strategically. I think it's okay to admit that, you know what, she's right. If I meet a guy who's young and doing well for himself, why should I expect him to walk into my home and play stepdad to my four children? Now, if he pursues you and he's saying to himself, I want you, girl, and he is proving to you that he is the man for you and he wants to be an active stepfather, then you go for it. But I think to set your eyes on that guy and chase after him, 
I think you're not being strategic. I think you might be making a mistake. I think you should strategically place yourself in environments with other parents. Um, so, yeah, you're right. Where are you looking for the guy at? You might want to change, you know, going dancing at the local downtown club to find your guy because most guys who have custody of their children or taking care of their kids got to be up in the morning just like you do. So he's not going to be there on a random Tuesday night. Only the dudes with no responsibility is going to be in the club Tuesday night. So, and, and not all the time. I'm just being very vague here in my examples. What I'm saying is you need to go to daddy daycare to find your husband. You know, stay out of the club. Stay out of the recording studio. Most of them people are not interested in Disney trips with you and your kids. They're interested in late nights, early mornings. Like I said, I would evaluate your situation and just see if it's good and conducive for what you got going on. Mm -hmm. I would never tell someone to, you have to date someone with kids or, you know, y'all make the Brady Bunch and think like those type, like y'all think all those type of things would, would actually like work i mean you believe in dreamland so i don't <laughs> believe in dreamland but i believe but in being strategic in time, and picking the best out possible at the same outcome. point in time it's what's ever best for that person so whatever outcome it is because i wouldn't say that like in this case we're talking about the guy so right. he already made his strategic outcome right uh, i would say a lot of times um uh, you know Women don't really make strategic outcomes. They move by emotion exactly. a lot of times. So I don't really think that's an option. But since they don't choose relationships anyway, and it's not in their it's not in their possession to do that, it doesn't really matter what strategic outcomes they actually do because relationships are actually pursued by men. So they can sit there and if they have kids, they could probably feel a certain way about it. But the person that's actually choosing, which is this guy saying he doesn't want to, that's not even on the table for them. Right, but I think my point is when women are out there looking for love. I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking about the, the, the actual guy. the guy. Yeah. I just think that more women should be like him. He's being strategic in his dating and not opening himself to every option. He's if, if there's a hundred women and fifty of them got kids, what he's saying is even though I got a whole bunch of shots with a hundred bitches and I might get a whole bunch of pussy. I'm going to do myself a favor and take the 50 with kids out of my eyesight. They can go ahead and leave the room. They have to remove themselves from the line. They are not getting in the club tonight. 50 of y'all got to go. This 50 without kids, I'm going to choose from. What I'm saying is I think women should be more like that. I get what you're saying. It depends on everybody's situation. There is a guy out there with no kids that probably can't have kids. He can't. Produce them. So he's going to find a woman with kids. But you would know that if you talk to him long enough. Yeah, he doesn't have kids, but he can't have them. So he's actually looking for someone with children. What I'm saying to women is you need to be strategic, just like the guy who is the subject matter of this conversation. Strategically place yourself in places that are more conducive to your situation. Because telling a mama to go fishing and see what she get first, to me, is taking too much of a risk. You know why? Because when you catch the fish, in most cases, he's going to be the fish that you want. You find out 90 days later after he's already been in your home and around your kids that he's a pedophile. You find that shit out later. Ain't nobody presenting themselves like they a pedophile. Ain't nobody presenting themselves like they going to whoop your ass. They all look great. So what I'm saying is, if you place yourself at the daycare, then most in most cases, not saying you can't get a bad guy there either. But if you place yourself in a place with men who already have children, in most cases, your kids are not going to scare him away. Why? Because he already has them. So you're removing the element of more bad shit by narrowing down the bad shit that you could possibly get. If you're removing 50 motherfuckers that may or may not be a bad shot, then you've got a closer shot at getting what you need because you've narrowed it down to what you need. That's all I'm saying. You can't be desperate enough to just be like, well, let me just check out and see who's going to call me today or inbox me today. Let me see if they're worth it. I mean, how much fishing you really want to do instead of placing people in the pool that are worthy of you and your situation and who have a situation like yours and then throw your rod in and then when you get your fish, it's not a big deal to spend time with him. 
And even if he turns out to be a bad guy, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, well, damn, I still fished from the pond that was conducive to me. Because if you tell me you picked a bad fish, but you over there in the river, down around the corner and in a neighborhood you wasn't supposed to be in anyway, I'm going to say that's your fault because you fishing in that pond you ain't had no business fishing out of. At least if you fishing out the right pond, I can say, now he's a motherfucking asshole. Now you go throw your rod back in that pond. That was just a bad fish in that pond. But the other pond is just a bad pond. It's not about the fish. You just at the wrong place fishing. That's where I'm coming from with it. That guy saying he's not even fishing from the pond with every time a fish. He's fishing from a pond with only a particular type of fish. And I think that's being strategic. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, so then it's time to tap in. Because I don't get an agree from him all the time. So let's just move away from that subject. And let's tap in tonight. What's our tap in, Alpha Male? Tap in is... <clears throat> okay. I only cheated on my girl because she was boring. I love her. I love her. But the little things like giving me head in the car is disrespectful and hoish to her. But we've been together like four years and uh, just need some excite just just need some excitement. Should I leave or should I try to convince her that this is not being hoish? This is probably the best tap in that we've had. I like it, and I'm gonna share a story, just a real brief one. I knew this guy, and he was talking to me, and he said, "I want you to know what this person did to me. It bothered me." And I said, what did they do? And he said, she went down on me and she swallowed my cum. That's just nasty. And he's talking about somebody he's in a relationship with. It really threw me off. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because when we all hear this, we're like, what? She's dumb. How does she think that's hoish? We have to remember people's upbringing. We have to remember, we just talked about this, the domino effect. How was her mother in the home? Um, this is an example, probably, if she thinks giving you head in the car is hoish, this is probably a woman that you want to just go ahead and break ties with. And I hate to seem petty because some people are going to be like, you know what? They can fix that. Eh. If this is something that is morally wrong to her, it's, she's not going to do it. And if this is getting in the way of you waving your fleet, your freak flag, then it's time to think about maybe separating from this person. If they think sucking your dick in a vehicle is morally wrong, you're going to have a problem. You are not equally yoked. I just don't think the relationship has a shot. If something like that is morally wrong to her, and it sounds like it is morally wrong to be a little bit of a freak. And it doesn't sound like he's going to be happy sexually with her. So I would say break ties now. You know, I hear women like this is this. I don't know if I've met any, mm -hmm. you know, thank God. <laughs> um, that's a tough one to be in. But I will say like off the top, I already know this woman isn't made for you anyway, just for the simple fact that you have to cheat <laughs> anyway. So even starting off the gate, if you're saying, well, I'm cheating because she won't give me head in the car. And this is like real basic shit. Big basic. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> like head in the car. Who doesn't get head in the car? <laughs> like, like, that's real, real basic. <laughs> and if you're having to explain that to her, which I'm feeling like should need no explanation. But I will say, like, I have a, 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 a story myself. Um, I was messing with this chick and... We was having sex and she brought up the idea of she didn't want to give me head because when she said it at first, I was like, you don't give head. And she said, well, I'm saving that for marriage. Now, I was thinking to myself, that's a little off whack. Like you giving I, I would think you would want to get a pussy up more than the head, but tomato, tomato, whatever, whatever you feel, that's good. But I also made a decision right then and there when she when she said that I'm like I'm a head guy. So you you I'm, said you because you said it wrong. You said I would think she would want to give the pussy up more than the head. But you mean you think she would want to give the head for, up for, for, no, more for, than the pussy? Well, well, for marriage, what I'm saying is she was giving me the pussy, and 
and but, not giving but, you the head. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, for marriage, I was thinking it would be the other way around. I would think you would rather give me head. And than, save your pussy for And marriage. save the pussy for marriage. So, to me, I, I just felt that was, like, ass backwards. But, like I said, that's just... You know, that's her own. That's how people are brought you know up what I'm sometimes. That, that, that's her own uh, choice and, and, and ride and venue and stuff like that. But for me, once she said that, I did make the conscious decision uh, that uh, I ain't going to see this bitch no more. Right. And, uh, I, and that was the last time that I saw her. You right. know what I'm saying? I, I, I wiped my hands clean. And I would definitely say there's no explanation that need to be said, no explaining that needs to be done or anything like that. Like for me... Hey, if she's not doing it, Somebody hey, else got hey to. just go ahead and give it the old heave hole and give it that strike and just go ahead and throw that fish back because uh, you're not going to have any fun. And the one thing about women is like women, when they get something in their head, it's just that's what it is. It's like the only person that could probably tell them or convince them would be a, a preacher. You know what I'm saying? They have to read it in a good book for them to say, you know what, I need to change it because a preacher told me or uh, a pastor or whatever. But other than that, some man trying to convince her of doing some shit she don't want to do, that's not happening. I think it's interesting that you made a decision in that moment that, yeah, I'm just going to have sex with this bitch and I ain't going to never see her again. You made a decision right there to throw that fish back in the pond. And that's your advice from the Relations Crew. My name is Kana Lasseter. It's the end of our show. You can find me at Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Kana Lasseter. Hey, find your boy on both platforms. That's IG and Twitter at 51 Spade. I want to thank everybody for joining us on Podbean. And hey, check us out every Friday. We got the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel, man. We need more subscribers. Hit that like button right now. Don't wait, because if you wait, you're going to miss the full episode. If you're looking for the shirts, like I said, you can get them at alphamalegodcreations.com. And like I always say about this.